I want to talk today about how to rewire through stent struts in bifurcation stenting. This talk complements my prior talk regarding side branch wiring, and it complements my bifurcation PCI playlist. So let's say here we stented the main branch across the side branch, and we want to rewire the side branch through the stent struts. There are five key ideas for rewiring. One, you need to perform a proper pot of the proximal stent with a larger balloon to oppose the stent struts well and prevent the wire from going behind the stent struts, whether at the entry side of the stents or somewhere in the middle of the stent or frequently at the carina level. So one proper pot. Number two, you need to pick a non-polymer wire. Unlike what I explained with difficult side branch wiring where I suggested the use of polymer wire to reduce wire prolapse, here I suggest using non-polymer wire because polymer wire will slide easily behind the stent struts without giving you a good tactile feedback. So use a non-polymer wire like BMW. And the way you shape it, you put double bend on it, the small distal tip of one millimeter, and the long bend of about five, six millimeter more proximally. It will be long and sharp, okay, to be able to reach that side branch and potentially to be able to knuckle that wire. The third idea is that you advance the wire through those 10 struts in two ways. And those two ideas are the most important part of this slide. So you can follow the knuckle technique where you advance that sharply bent wire in a knuckled fashion. You make it knuckle just before you enter the stand and you push the knuckle past the side branch. Then you pull and you try to hook the side branch on the way back. The knuckle makes sure that you didn't go behind the stent struts. So you knuckle it before entering the stent all the way distally. Then you pull back and you try to hook the side branch on the way back. The second maneuver, which is my preferred maneuver, is what I call the helicopter or the spin or twirl technique. Basically, you enter the stent while your wire is constantly twirling, constantly spinning. The tip is never stiff, is never buckled. It's always free and moving. So it's a constant spin and twirl on the wire. You enter that stent with that twirl, and this way you make sure you don't go behind the stent struts. And you can go this way past the side branch and try to hook the side branch on the way back, or you can try to hook the side branch on the way in. But the idea is that you're constantly twirling around that side branch until you reach the side branch level where you will need to use directionality to go into it. But until that point, whether before or, or after the side branch, your wire is constantly moving and helicoptering. It's dancing, helicoptering, free. If the wire buckle at any time, you pull it back, you re-spin it to make sure the tip remains free. And again, you may cross directly into the side branch or you may go past it while spinning and pull back and engage the side branch. Number four, you only push with directionality without much spin at that carina level as you are hooking the carina. You may accept some resistance or some buckling at this level as you're crossing the stent cells, but as you cross the stent cells, as the wire gets loose, as you cross those cells, you immediately you re-spin or knuckle. And number five, after you cross, you advance a small balloon, two to 2.5 millimeter balloon. This should be able to cross the stent cells. If that balloon gets stuck, if you cannot advance it, that means that the wire is behind the stent struts at one point, whether the beginning of the stent, the middle of it, or at the carana level. Don't start using guide liner and anchor balloon and heavy support techniques. When the balloon that is that small doesn't go, you're behind the stent struts. So you need to rewire. 
So what I do, if the balloon gets stuck at one point, let's say the balloon gets stuck here, that means I'm entering behind the stent struts at this level. So I keep the balloon wherever it reach because whatever it reach is not behind the stent strut. So I keep it at wherever it reached. I pull back the wire and I redirect from that point on while re-spinning the wire and eventually direct it at the Karana level to enter the side branch. So this is the most important slide, the five important tips you need to know. Other ideas, if the balloon cannot be advanced, you are usually behind the stent struts. Only at the awesome of the side branch, it may be that the balloon has difficulty crossing through multiple strut layers, especially if you've done DK crush or culotte and you've already placed two stents with the culotte. In those cases, it may be difficult to advance a balloon through multiple strut layers, even if you are not behind the struts. So if the balloon gets stuck at that very Karana level, consider using a lower profile balloon. So I generally advance a low profile two by eight or two by 12 millimeter balloon, low profile, which should cross between stent struts, even at the Karina. It will not be able to cross behind the stent struts. Then after using that smaller balloon, I can upsize to three plus millimeter as needed, depending on the side branch size. Other ideas in cases where the side branch was difficult to wire to begin with, try in those cases to just do a single stent strategy. Try to protect the side branch, wire it once, and just plan for single stent strategy. Try to avoid rewiring two stent strategy, kissing balloon, avoid the crush or DK crush, which implies two more side branch rewiring. That will be more difficult. With DK crush, you don't only wire it once, you have to rewire it twice after you stent and crush the stent, and you have to rewire it a third time after you stent the main branch through multiple strut layers. So in those cases, try to just use a single stent strategy while protecting the side branch. If you need to rewire a difficult side branch, beside those five ideas, you may need additional tips to wire difficult side branch that I described in my prior talk, such as using a sharper and larger tip on the wire, that one centimeter umbrella U-shape on the wire, sharper and longer tip on the wire. You may use a dual lumen catheter along with a sharper or U-band on the wire. You may use a blocking balloon, super cross, or the reverse hairpin technique. This is an illustration of what I just described, the spin technique. So here, uh, this is a left circumflex or M bifurcation. We did culotte for this bifurcation. Here we had stented the main branch, then the side branch. Then now we're trying to recross into the main branch through that one to two layers of stents. It's one layer across the ostium but at the edges, it's two layers of stent. So see here, we're crossing with our wire, but you can see that the tip here was buckling and it felt stiff. See, it's a stiff, then we pushed it through the side branch. So it was a stiff and stuck and buckling. So we knew we're probably behind the stent struts. See, see how stiff it is. So, and we proved it by the fact that the balloon could not be advanced. So what we did, we kept the balloon to the point where we could advance it. We pulled back the wire and we wired it properly using a proper spin and free and helicopter technique. We made sure the wire tip keeps dancing and free and see here how we recrossed. So here it buckled, we pull back, we restart to, to spin it, spin it, spin it freely. We span, span, span. Look, it's always free, it's never stuck, always dancing. Then 
At the Karana level here, we use directionality. After we hooked that Karana, then we pushed. We accepted a little Bakni. So we pushed at the very end through that Karana. Then after we push, we restarted to spin and we even here knuckle it. And what I mean by spinning and dancing and helicopter is you're basically moving that wire back and forth, right then left. One twist to the right, one twist to the left, then again, right and left. And you may even spin it twice in every direction. So one, two to the right, three, four to the left, five, six to the right. So you may spin it one in each direction or twice in every direction. This way you make sure it's always free. And this is the other technique, the knuckling that we could have used. So here you can advance the wire with a knuckle all the way into the main branch. Here, remember, we're trying to wire that branch here through the struts. So you can advance a knuckle through the main branch. Then you pull back the knuckle. You pull back that knuckle and you try to hook the side branch using directionality. As you will see here, we pull back, then we advance, and as we're advancing, we accept a little resistance, then we push and knuckle. This is a, another illustration. This is a patient with bifurcation left main, and we were trying to rewire for left circumflex restenosis. He has one cent layer in the left main and the osseum proximal circumflex, and two layer in the LAD. Initially, we wired the circumflex, but we could not advance the balloon past the left main, which told us that the wire has gone behind the stent struts somewhere in the middle of the left main. So we kept our balloon around the left main till whatever point it was able to be advanced to. Then we pulled back the wire and we rewired using that heavy spin technique and watch it here. See how we're spinning, spinning, spinning. It's very free, the wire. It's never stuck. Here it buckles or gets stuck. We immediately pull back. We re-spin it, make sure it's free. See how dancing and nice and free it is. Then we go. This way we make sure we're not behind the stent struts. So indeed, with this wiring that I showed here, uh, we were able to advance a balloon and eventually DCB and lithotripsy balloon for this restenosis. I will show you a case here that illustrate uh, stent struts crossing. This is a patient with uh, severe OM bifurcation stenosis. This is a true bifurcation here that is 111 Medina class, but it's not a complex bifurcation in a sense that this side branch here is not involved in a long or complex fashion. So we can just do provisional strategy here, stent across while protecting that side branch. And here is another view of that bifurcation. You see it in a cranial view here. This is where the bifurcation is. Again, a true bifurcation, but non-complex. The disease in that side branch is not long or heavily calcified or heavily atherosclerotic. And it's not critical. It's in that 50 to 70% range. So one cent strategy is fine. So we double wired and stented across that side branch, but it became severe over 75% stenotic after stenting across. So we decided to do a provisional ballooning and we can also do a provisional tap stenting. Either way, we need to rewire. And this is how we rewired. See how that wire tip is constantly spinning and dancing as we're advancing it through the main branch stent. See how it's dancing and spinning. It buckles, we pull back, we restart to spin it. Always dancing. And once we reach the level of the side branch, we use directionality to cross the side branch. As you may see here. So we're hooking it and we may need to push. Now that side branch was difficult to cross. Beside the fact that we're crossing through side branch struts, it's just a difficult side branch to cross. So in this case, I use what I described last time, which is the turning wheel technique. So after hooking the side branch, 
we pushed a little bit, it didn't go. So then we use the turning wheel technique where you hook it, then you give a torque on the tip with a slight pull, then you push again. So you hook it, you flip it, meaning you torque it, you pull, then you push. It's the turning wheel. Again, we hooked it, slight torque, then we pulled it, then we pushed with that torque in place. We pushed with the torque in place. Then we eventually kept spinning the wire through. And we were able to advance a balloon here, 2.5 by 8 millimeter balloon. Again, proving that we are not behind the stent struts. It was a little hard to advance the balloon. It was There was a little bit of resistance at the carina, but after that resistance gave away, the balloon went in very easily. And we eventually did a kissing balloon with a great result. Now here you could we could have done tap stenting. Tap stenting is as easy as a final kissing balloon. After you do your provisional balloon, you advance your tap stent and you do simultaneous stent in the side branch and balloon in the main branch without the need for additional rewiring. And this slide illustrates the importance of recrossing the main branch stent through distal struts. If you cross distally, you push the main branch stent struts toward the non-carina arm, the upper arm of that side branch, which is the arm that is more difficult to scaffold and to cover. Okay, that arm away from the carina. So, you cross distally, you balloon, the balloon will scaffold that upper arm or what we call the arm away from the carina. And that will create some scaffolding of that side branch and also it will make it easier to eventually position a tap stent with minimal protrusion if you eventually decide to tap stent. This is another illustration of wire twirling. This is not wiring through stent struts, but I just want to show you that spin technique of the wire. This is a patient with anterior STEMI. There is an occlusion of the LAD after a diagonal side branch. So how we enter that occlusion using the wire spin. Watch here. So here we are at the occlusion. So you station your wire at the occlusion side, then you start twirling it till it finds the channel, the path of least resistance in the occlusion. And that's the same wiring maneuver I use in acute occlusion like STEMI and in subacute or even chronic occlusion when I'm wiring integrally. So see how we're spinning the wire. You feel buckling, you pull back and you keep spinning the wire, spinning. You buckle, you pull back. Then you spin until it finds that channel. You buckle, you pull back. You spin again, you spin, spin, spin. Eventually it found that channel in the LED and it went through. And when I say spin in occlusions, I try to spin multiple times in every direction. So I spin one, two, three to the right, then one, two, three to the left, then one, two, three to the right. So, you know, it's not just one, one, it's one, two, three in every direction. That can help the wire tip find the path of least resistance by allowing it to sweep 360 degrees in all directions and in all ways. And by allowing the wire to create a drilling action at that cap. This is another case. This is a 49 year old man who presented with inferoposterior subtle STEMI. And this is what he has. He has distal OM, occlusion, that's probably the culprit of his MI, but he also has true bifurcation circumflex OM disease. He has circumflex disease here and he has a bifurcation circumflex OM disease here. So we decided to fix the occlusion with a just balloon. The runoff is not long enough to warrant stenting. So we decided to fix that established flow of the balloon and treat this bifurcation. So that's what we did. We opened the distal left circumflex occlusion and the plan was to do two-stent strategy for this complex left circumflex OM bifurcation. We stented first the left circumflex. We placed the stent in the main left circumflex. 
then we decided to do either tap or culotte into the OM. We could have done it the other way around. We could have put a stent into the OM, then consider doing a culotte or tap into the main left cervix. But anyway, that's what we did here. We placed a stent in the main cervix, then we decided to do tap or culotte into the OM. And this is the result after the circumflex stents. And here it just in illustration, tap is like a halfway culotte. You deploy your stent into the side branch while a balloon is stationed in the main branch, in the main branch stent, and you prevent that side branch stent from touching the wall. Then after deploying your side branch stent, you do simultaneous balloon dilatation using that balloon that was stationed in the main branch. So again, is tap is as simple as provisional ballooning, except that you're using a stent in the side branch instead of a balloon. Culotte is more advanced. You make that stent touch the wall of the main branch, ending with a double circumference of stents into the main branch, limit the amount of that double circumference. That's what you call mini culotte. Then after doing this, you have to rewire into that main branch and do another kissing balloon. So Tap is like halfway culotte. You deploy your stand and immediately you do the final kiss. You're done. Whereas with culotte, you have to rewire to do final kiss. And tap, like I said, is almost similar to provisional balloon. And it may be used in shallow angle if you do proper technique. That's the difference between a good tap and a less good tap for the very same angle. A good tap technique meaning means you do a good part of the main branch approximately to make some of that main branch stent protrude into the side branch so that you allow some scaffolding of that upper arm, non carina arm of the side branch. Then you recross the distal struts again to create a scaffolding of that upper arm, non carina arm of the side branch. This can be done for any angles. It's even more successful if the side branch is small while the main branch is much larger when you have discrepancy between side branch and main branch. Anyway, we decided here to do a mini culotte. So we rewired the OM. We stented in a mini culotte fashion from the OM into the main proximal circumflex. We could have done again tap, meaning making that stent land just into the side branch ostium while having a balloon stationed into the main branch, preventing it from touching the wall. But here we made it touch the wall because it's culotte. Now, after we did the culotte, we needed to rewire through that strut layer into the main branch. You have one strut layer at the osseum, but you have two strut layers at the edges of that circumference. So it's difficult rewiring. And here I showed previously how we rewired here while making sure the wire is dancing and spinning at all time. If you buckle, you pull back, you make it spin again, and you're dancing at all time. You can make it dance and advance it distally, then pull back, hook that branch of interest, or you can dance and go in and direct it on the way in. That's what we did. Eventually, we did our final kissing balloon, and that was the final result. This was done with a six French a catheter transradially.